Okay, so let's pick up with domain classes. So domain classes are going to be your interface uh, to like whatever your data store is, uh, whether it be a SQL database or a NoSQL uh, data store. So I'm going to check out uh, this branch, which is step two, which I actually already have checked out. And I'll just going to run a get k, which shows up on my other screen, which you can't see. So uh, basically for each of these steps that I've gone through, uh, I'm going to be going through, I have uh, different branches set up and one commit per branch. And within each of those in the commit messages, you'll see the commands that I've actually run to generate up code. So for creating a domain class, I have Grails, create domain class, and the name of the domain class. And what that'll do is it'll generate up the uh, domain classes and a unit test for each of those domain classes. Now it's up to you how far you want to take this. Um, as I've kind of mentioned before, uh, I don't find a lot of use in really unit testing the domain classes so much. Um, you can, like say you have some uh, custom constraint logic or you've added some you know, extra functionality to your domain, then it would make sense to do a unit test. But generally you shouldn't have a lot of extra functionality in your domain classes. Um, also, if you decide to do unit tests for constraints, uh, I would only do it for custom constraints and not the built-in constraints because if you're trying to unit test the built-in constraints what you're really doing is trying to test the framework and not all of those really work within unit tests per se so just keep that in mind. So let's look at some of these domain classes. So this is just a, a basic one that I've set up here uh, for my project domain class and uh, it has a name, a description, and uh, if sample. So I have uh, a bunch of strings here. Uh, you can also use uh, long, uh, which will give you, uh, oh, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, I don't remember what it gives you in database, but it translates to, you know, the 64-bit uh, integer in the database, I believe. Um, is that what it is? Yep. Yeah, it depends. It also varies between database, what they're actually called and everything. Uh, one thing you don't see here is an ID, which you get by default. So every domain class by default will have uh, an ID that you can use, uh, which will be an auto incrementing ID. However, uh, there are ways to override that, which you can look up in the uh, documentation. So moving on, we have uh, constraints, and these allow you to put constraints on your domain class. Uh, some of these uh, these will actually get turned into the DDL that actually creates uh, the tables for the domains. Um, if you have it set up to be uh, create or update in your um, configuration, which I showed last time. Uh, here I've just uh, set up for the name property, this to be unique true. Uh, if I go to another domain class, uh, you'll see I've set up the size here, which uh, I put a range, so it has to be, you know, 5 to 256. Um, here I've actually set up another type, which uh, is I'm setting the body to be text, so that it'll actually give me a bigger uh, size, where uh, string, I believe, is just translates to a var car, so, you know, it has those limitations. Um, let's see, uh, I do believe there's also an SQL type which allows you to tap into the lower level type of uh, whatever the column is and set, set that. So if you wanted to set something to be a, a specifically to be a blob, I believe that's how you would go about that. Um, something that you don't see here, uh, which I'm just going to steal from a web page that I have open. Um, which doesn't get set up uh, by default is the uh, mapping and I'm just gonna delete these extra parts so with uh, the mapping you can do uh, a few extra things like uh, add an index 
Uh, if you want, you can also set up multiple indexes, uh, which would be you know separated by a comma. And if you had multiple columns with the same index name, it'll create a multi-key index for you. Um, you could also, if you wanted to uh, map to say a particular table already in the database, you could use the uh, table uh, moniker and give that an actual table name. And uh, that will allow you to actually map this domain class to a table, say you have a legacy database. Um, and if you're doing that, then you probably do not want the uh, drop create or the update because you know that could cause you problems. Um, you can also do uh, mappings to columns as well uh, through here. But uh, you know this is just one of the things that you some of the things you can set up. Uh, let's see, anything else I want to tell you about domain classes? I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, I'm going to be working with these a little bit more in uh, some of the other videos, and uh, we'll go from there.